Jews proving that he was not a spiritual body but he was alive. And he says to Mary, Mary, the one word is sufficient for Mary to recognize her Lord and Master. You know, because everyone has a particular style of calling the beloved one. And the tone in the style which you call a beloved one is sufficient to recognize who is the person. She immediately recognizes that it is Jesus peace be upon him. And she rushes forward toward him. Gospel of John, chapter number 20, verse 15, 16, 17. Jesus peace be upon him says, touch me not. Why? Why touch me not? Is he a bundle of electricity that if someone touches him, the person will be electrocuted? Is he a bundle of dynamite that if someone touches, they will blow up? Why does he say, touch me not? Because he was a physical body. Imagine the ordeal, the pain, the physical pain, the emotional pressure that he had going through all that so-called, supposedly put on the cross, put on the cross, all that pain and torture, it will hurt a physical body. He says, touch me not. And then continues and says, in Gospel of John chapter 20, verse number 17, I have not yet ascended unto my father. Meaning what? That he has not yet been dead. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, unequivocally says that he has not yet been resurrected. Proving that he was alive. Later on it's mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 16, verse number 11, that the disciples, they had heard that Jesus, peace be upon him, was alive. From her, Mary Magdalene, but they believed not. You know, the Jews, they had a habit of posing questions, troubling the messengers. The Quran says that, the Bible says that, they posed questions to Moses, peace be upon him, they troubled him, and they harassed him, same they did with Jesus, peace be upon him. Further, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38. The Jews come up to Jesus, peace be upon him, and say, Master, Rabbi, meaning, O oh Lord, why don't you give us a sign? Sign meaning a miracle. Miracle. All the good works that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did was not sufficient to convince the Jews. They said, give us a sign, give us a miracle. Maybe, like flying in the air, like walking on the water, like walking on burning charcoal. They wanted some miracle. Sign here doesn't mean a sign on a lamppost. You know? Like you have signs on the roads. It's not that sign. It particularly means a miracle. And if you read the New International Version, it says a miraculous sign. What is the reply Jesus, peace be upon him, gives? What is the reply he gives? In the next verse, Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 39 and 40, he says, You evil and adulterous generation, seek it be after a sign. You seek for a miracle? No sign shall be given to you but the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus, peace be upon him, doesn't say that, see, go and meet Bartimaeus, the blind person who I gave sight. Why don't you ask the woman with issues, who only on touching me she was healed. He didn't refer to the 2,000 pigs he had killed to heal a possessed man. He doesn't say that the 5,000 and the 3,000 people he fed with a broiled fish and with bread. He says, no sign shall be given to you but the sign of Jonah. Jesus, peace be upon him, is putting all his eggs in one basket. The sign of Jonah. And for a person to know the sign of Jonah, he doesn't have to be a scholar of the Bible. He doesn't have to be a doctor of divinity because it is taught in Sunday school. And in most countries, including India, Irrespective whether you are a Christian, or a Muslim, or a Hindu, somewhere or the other it is taught, either in comics, or in moral science lessons, the sign of Jonah, or Jonah and the whale. They know. But if you want to know the sign of Jonah actually, in the Bible, in this big book, the sign of Jonah is less than two pages, less than one and a half page. I had the Zorov's copy done from the same Bible to make it easy. Less than one and a half side. 
Less than one half side. Only four chapters. And to find one page in encyclopedia of more than a thousand pages is difficult. But everyone knows the outline of the story. That Almighty God, He asks His messenger, Jonah, peace be upon Him, to go and deliver the message to the Ninevites, to go to Nineveh. But He says, these Ninevites, they are so sinful, what will they listen to the message? He thinks that they will make fun of me. It will be a waste of time. So he goes to Joppa and from there he's setting sail to Tarshish. Now while he that sea, there's a huge storm. And it was the superstition of the marines of that time that if there's a storm at sea, it is because someone has disobeyed the master. And they had their own ways in trying to find who was the person responsible. They had the system of casting of lots. And when they cast lots, it comes to the turn of Jonah, peace be upon him. And Jonah being a messenger of Almighty God, he agrees and he says that, see, I am the person responsible. I was told by my master, Lord, to go to Nineveh, but from Joppa I am setting sail to Tarshish, running away. I am at fault. You take me and throw me overboard. But they say, this person, such a pious person, why should simply he be killed? So they try and stir the ship, but yet they are not successful. The storm is yet there. So he says that, why don't you throw me overboard? And finally they agree, and they throw him overboard. When they throw him overboard, the storm subsides. Maybe it was a coincidence. Later on, a big fish, a whale comes and swallows Jonah, peace be upon him. Jonah prays to Almighty God from the belly of the whale. The whale takes Jonah, peace be upon him, for three days and three nights around the ocean, and then vomits him out on the seashore. What is the sign of Jonah, Jesus, peace be upon him, says? That no sign shall be given to you, but the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now I'd like to ask you a question. When Jonah was thrown overboard, was he dead or alive? Before you answer, I would like to make it easy for you. Let's see, Jonah volunteers. He says, I'm the culprit, I'm responsible, throw me overboard. If someone doesn't agree, maybe you'll have to break his leg, you may have to break his, his neck, you may have to twist his arm. But here he volunteers, so they don't have to do all that. So they throw him overboard. I'm asking a question, when Jonah was thrown overboard, was he dead or was he alive? Alive. The fish comes and follows him. Was he dead or alive? Alive. He prays to Almighty God from the belly of the whale. Was he dead or alive? Do dead men pray? Was he dead or alive? Alive. The whale takes Jonah three days and three nights in the ocean. Dead or alive? Alive. Fish vomits him out on the seashore. Was he dead or alive? Alive. Alive, 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 alive. When a person is thrown overboard in a raging sea, he ought to die. If he dies, no miracle. If he's alive, it's a miracle. Fish comes and follows him. He ought to die. He doesn't die. It's a miracle. Three days and three nights, suffocation and heat, in the belly of the whale, he ought to die. He doesn't die. It's a miracle. It's a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Jesus said, peace be upon him, as Jonah was three days and three nights, so shall the son of man be three days and three nights. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jonah was alive. But when I pose the question to my Christian brothers, and they are our brothers, they are our cousins, what do you call? They are brothers. When I pose the question to the Christians, that how was Jesus, peace be upon him, in the tomb according to you? And all of them say, that he was dead. He was dead. I am asking a question. Jonah was alive. Jesus, peace be upon him, was dead. So was Jesus, peace be upon him, alike or unlike Jonah? Like or unlike? Unlike. So Jesus, peace be upon him, does not fulfill the prophecy. He puts all his egg in one basket and says no sign shall be given but the sign of Jonah. And here the prophecy is not fulfilled. For the prophecy to be fulfilled, he should be alive. As I proved in the earlier part of my talk, he was alive. 
Otherwise, Jesus peace be upon him will be a liar. Knows Billah, which we cannot agree. We respect him, we revere him. So for him to fulfill the prophecy, he should be alive. And Jesus peace be upon him was alive as I proved in the early part of my talk.